water customers getting several months of bills all at once. Turns out this audit was supposed to address that problem five years ago. That story coming up. Sandbags aren't the only thing to protect your home if it floods. We're working for you on what you need to know about flood insurance. It's the first day of class for San Diego Unified has students at Hoover High School will welcome back. The dream of a healthy food co-op here in Imperial Beach, what organizers are doing to make that happen. Plus, do viral images really show what set off the wildfires in Hawaii? We verify. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Delayed water bills are costing San Diego customers thousands of dollars. Tonight, we've uncovered an audit that reveals this issue should have been taken of care of years ago. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan. Carlo Chiquetto is off tonight. We've heard from many of you who've gotten high bills after having not getting any for months. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is here with what she's learning today. Shannon? Yeah, Jesse and Marcella, uh, this goes back from 2018. Here's that audit when the city's public utilities department was scrutinized for, among other things, overbilling its customers. So an audit was done, and in this audit, it lists a number of suggested improvements, including letting people know when their meter reading is under review, which could result in them getting no bills and then several bills all at once. Fast forward five years later, we've heard from several of you who say it's still a problem that hasn't been fixed. It was a pretty big shock to us to have a bill for that amount of money. Yesterday, we told you about a Santa Luz couple who just received a water bill from the city of San Diego for a whopping $16,000. Their story is similar to others we've shared in recent months. And since today, we're hearing from even more customers. An 87-year-old man emailed us saying he hadn't received a bill for three years until he got one for more than $7,500. Another viewer reached out saying their bill is $13,000. Here's why. If your water use is abnormally high or low, the Public Utilities Department will put a hold on your account as they look into why. During that investigation, you're not being billed. You're also not being alerted until you get several months of bills all at once. This 2018 audit was supposed to take care of that. The San Diego City Auditor looked at the Public Utilities Department track record in billing and found a number of issues, one of which was not notifying customers whose bills were under investigation. The auditor suggested, quote, to improve customer satisfaction, the Public Utilities Department should communicate with customers in advance of anticipated bill impacting activities. Specifically, PUD should notify a customer when their meter reading is under review for a prolonged period that may impact their billing schedule or result in receiving multiple bills at the same time. We wanted to know why, after five years, has this issue still not been resolved? We reached out to several people, including the mayor's office, public utilities, as well as the city auditor. A public utility spokesperson previously told CBSA staffing issues have played a role, adding the city is working on an IT system enhancement that would timely notify customers whenever their bill is held in our billing system, and they estimated the enhancement will be fully developed by fall. Meanwhile, earlier today, Joseph Pichek, a principal performance auditor for the city of San Diego, told CBSA by phone, in September, there will be an update to the recommendation, at which time the city auditor will ask the water department why they haven't changed their policy on holding bills and not notifying customers. They will ask the water department to again change their policy to include the updated recommendation. And just within the past couple of hours, the auditor we spoke to by phone sent us a statement reiterating they will seek changes within the Public Utilities Department. We've also learned the city is investigating up to 28,000 water bills for a variety of reasons. So this is an issue a lot of people are dealing with. We will continue to stay on top of this story and keep you updated with the very latest. And Marcella and Jesse, one of the responses we've gotten from this story is, you don't get a bill for so long, why didn't you notice? Well, we've heard from lots of people. Some say they thought their partner was paying it. Some say they were on auto pay mm -hmm. and they were never being charged. And others say they actually would go into their account thinking, huh, this is weird, I haven't gotten a bill. And it showed a zero balance. Right. So I was explaining that as well uh, last night. Customers are only billed every other month. So it's not something that's on your radar on the first of the month. And then I don't even get a bill. I get a receipt when it's done through auto pay and then I think, oh, my water bill was paid. But I don't know that I would remember, you know, you don't, you don't look for something that's missing and you just assume that it's being paid through auto pay and then suddenly you get a bill 18 months later for $16,000. 
that's a big mistake. Exactly. And oftentimes these bills are accurate. So 16 months worth of bills could add up to thousands of dollars. But imagine getting that bill all at mm -hmm. one time. Now they're not having people pay extra pay interest you know you can get on payment systems but still the customers we're hearing from are saying look this isn't right this has been a problem for years you know we it found seems. in this audit five years ago it was suggested they take care of this so hopefully now we're putting the pressure on and they will fix it. It seems simple that you could provide a, a coding algorithm that would send someone a message that says hey there's an issue with your bill call us. Exactly. We'll see that what you happens. make that call. Stay tuned. <laughs> not we'll 18 months happens. later. Thanks, Shannon, for working on that. And if you are not receiving your water bills, we have more information on what you can do about that and a guide on checking for any leaks. We've posted the story on the help button at cbs8.com. You can also download and visit the CBS 8 app for more info. Here at CBS 8 also, we want to help solve problems affecting you like this. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Three people are in the hospital tonight after a car crashed through a discount tire in National City. This happened at the store on Plaza Boulevard. National City police detectives say the car ran over a person walking down the street and then hit an employee when it went through the store. The driver was also hurt. No word on anyone's condition at this point. A trial date is set for January to decide who will get guardianship of Maya Miliete's three kids. January is also when Maya's husband, Larry Miliete, will go on trial facing murder charges. CBS 8's David Gofferton was in court today when the husband's defense attorney talked about possibly stepping down from the criminal case. Court uh, sets a review hearing. It started out as a routine hearing to set a trial date in the court battle over guardianship of Maya Miliete's three children. No cameras were allowed in probate court. This video is from a previous hearing. The judge did set a trial date for the guardianship case for January 5th. The same month, Maya's husband, Larry Miliete, is set to go on trial in criminal court for the alleged murder of his wife. That's when the unexpected happened. An opposing attorney suggested there would be no conflict between the two trials because Larry's defense attorney would soon be stepping down from the murder case. The defense attorney, Benita Martinez, then stood up and told the judge if she was, quote, relieved from the case, it would be for financial reasons because Larry can't afford to pay her. Earlier this month, the same probate judge ordered the Miliete home in Chula Vista to be sold on the open market, and some of that money could end up going to Larry's defense attorney. All funds from the proceeds of the sale of the residence are to be placed in a blocked account until uh, it can be determined which part belongs to Ms. Miliete and which part belongs to Mr. Miliete. Outside court, I asked Larry's attorney if she was indeed stepping down from the murder case. She told me if there was no money to pay her legal fees, quote, I will have no choice but to resign from the case, but also added, quote, Larry would have to be found indigent or unable to afford an attorney before a public defender could take over the case. The defense attorney also suggested another option. If county funds could be used to pay her legal fees, she would not have to step down. The next hearing in the criminal case is now set for October 10th. At that hearing, we may get more information about whether Larry's attorney, Benita Martinez, is going to keep representing him or whether the case might be handed off to the public defender's office. The murder trial is set to begin January 16th. At the downtown courthouse, David Godfordson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. Local geologists say San Diegans should be cautious around cliffs, especially over the next few days as the ground dries out. Geologists are monitoring bluffs up and down our coast after Tropical Storm Hillary. They say the surface may appear dry, but deeper in the soil there can be plenty of moisture. As of now, Dr. Pat Abbott from San Diego State University says things are looking good. Instead of coming in with the force we expected, luckily the storm made landfall over 200 miles down in Baja California, lost a lot of energy coming up here to cross the border, and then traveled across the county remarkably fast. Still, he says you should always be safe around bluffs. Do not set up camp under them and make sure you listen to lifeguards. The San Diego Unified School District welcomed students back for the first day of the new school year today. As CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe shows us, the district kicked off things with a celebration at Hoover High School this morning. 
Well, the school year is now officially underway for more than 121,000 students in the district. Hoover High School welcoming back many of those students earlier today for a fun filled morning for the first day of class. Take a look at all the fun. We are the mighty varsity. I think the kids are excited. Class is now in session for all San Diego Unified Schools. Teachers and staff at Hoover High School, the cheer team, mariachi band, and school mascot all took part in a welcome back celebration. We tell a story. I loved it. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I had fun this morning. I think it was beautiful. The school year started one day later than planned because of Tropical Storm Hillary. The district took the extra day to evaluate the facilities, which officials say only suffered minimal damage. Because of that and because of that extra time that we had, um, we are now ready in all of our schools and all of our classrooms to make sure that our students have a safe um, place to, uh, to come to school today. The new school year promises to be one of growth and accomplishment, according to the district. We want to create the conditions where you can thrive and so we have a renewed commitment to the values and the vision of our community. We are moving from five to 15 community schools. We will continue our support for mental health. The district is also introducing a total of five new sport programs. Our sports uh, for our women in particular for in high school, five new uh, CIF sports. Additionally, the district plans to continue to expand its universal transitional kindergarten program. Research has shown that if uh, walking into kindergarten, if they have that extra level of school, that grade right below, they're gonna just do that much better in school and have a great deal of academic success. Rocia de la Fe, CBS 8. I hope the first day went well. Yeah, it's almost a uh... Halfway to the weekend. So, I know. You know. There we go. Still ahead tonight, while you'll want to take a closer look at your home and flood insurance policies. Plus, a five year wait for a corpse flower to bloom may soon be over. We're talking about a seasonal high today for downtown at 78 degrees, but inland it was actually below. How long will that be the pattern? Details ahead. And plans for a community owned health food store hit a roadblock in the South Bay.